Happy Friday. Here we are once again to share um, an update about learning and well being and uh, belonging at an elementary school at ISP. I'm going to share my screen with you. Today I'll be pre presenting alone, and next Friday, Ms. Alba will join us again. For the last couple of weeks, we've been really focusing on well-being and belonging. Um, this week, we want to focus on learning and some of the exciting examples of learning that are happening um, at school uh, while your children are on site. One of ISP's learning principles is that curiosity drives what and how we learn. And, and we know that curiosity is a powerful motivator um, for children's learning, for our learning as adults. And as this um, picture illustrates, even to the point that young children will climb up on anything and, and around anything to be able to discover what they're interested in. That fits with this definition of curiosity that it's a strong desire to know or learn something, that, it, that it, it's the interest, the spirit of inquiry, the inquisitiveness that, that can drive learning. And that's something that we try to leverage and capitalize on as we support your children's learning and as we help them develop the skills to use their curiosity to learn further. One of the things that our teachers do throughout the elementary school is they set up um, displays in the classrooms um, that could pique uh, children's curiosity, that can inspire them to ask questions. And here are a couple of examples from the um, new outdoor learning indoor studio um, where um, collections of books and materials about nature are being used to spark children's curiosity. Uh, to give you an example, this display of books is mirrored um, by a new bird feeder outside so that children will eventually see the birds that they might be interested in learning more about. And the collection on the right is about trees with examples of leaves and pods and books that might um, have children start asking questions about trees and, and seeing what else they'd like to learn. Here you can see two third graders who are quite fascinated by some of the things they've discovered and are trying to make sense of what they're seeing and looking closely and observing carefully, which is um, a part of um, nurturing their curiosity and comes from their curiosity. The story uh, that I want to talk about today in a little more detail is about a group of um, five and six year olds in EC5 who started out um, looking at this very strange object, which is uh, something new to them they hadn't seen before. And you can see this child is looking very carefully and trying to draw the details and, and asking, you know, what is it that I see? What, what might this be? And here, a couple of children are, are touching it and, and looking at uh, photos in a book, trying to figure out just what might it be. Of course, it's fascinating because not having seen it before, I, I was also very curious if any of us would be. And they begin to, to um, compare and contrast. And this is something that the teacher has done intentionally, putting out two similar um, objects, but also different. And it encourages the children to ask, how are these two things alike? And how are they different? They look the same, but they feel different. And that leads to the question of, well, why is that? And they begin to develop theories. In this case, the children are, are beginning to theorize that maybe um, when these things that we were looking at alive, they were these flowers. And, and so if they were, that might be why they, they feel different or they look different. And then they, they work to verify their theories. They look closer. 
they, here they're using magnifying glasses, just like what they've used with the photos in the book, trying to, like a botanist or a biologist or an ecologist, look very closely and make sense of what it is they're seeing and, and record um, their observations. And then finally, the inquiry, um, I can't say finally because it continues as a next step. Something has fallen out of the seed pods because they were touching them so much and they begin to wonder, well, what is this thing? They haven't yet concluded that it's a seed, but there's a book um, placed nearby that they can use as another resource, resource to make sense of what they're seeing. And the teachers, capitalizing on their theories and, and the conclusions the children are starting to draw from the different provocations um, used to spark their curiosity, take them outside to a nearby garden where they can observe live sunflowers. And here they continue to look closely and observe um, and make sense of these um, objects that they're seeing, these flowers that they're seeing and learning about. When we talk about um, curiosity driving what and how we learn, you've seen examples of it driving um, the what, that they're, they're making sense of the different objects that have been shared with them. But we're also very carefully throughout the years they're in the elementary school scaffolding or, or supporting how they, they use their curiosity to learn. So starting with um, three and four year olds, we um, foster their love of learning new things. We encourage them to ask questions about the things they're curious about and we help them learn to ask different kinds of questions. And these, this experience of observing details and sharing those details starts as young as three and four. It goes all the way through EC5, first and second grade. And then and another example, in grade three is the children start to say, I can ask the questions I'm curious about and I can change my questions as I discover new things. And you saw evidence of that um, in this mini story that I just shared about looking at two things that are different, but the same and answering different, asking different questions and then finding different ways to answer their questions. And that continues through grade five where they continue to ask questions and change them as they discover new things. And as they find answers to their questions, they learn to use a range of resources. So we're helping them to develop skills of inquiry that they can use to explore the things that they're curious about. This, these opportunities to um, learn new things, to become curious about things that are strange or novel to them, um, permeate um, everything that happens in, in the elementary school throughout the day. Inside, in, in studios that are set up for them, and outside um, with, with different opportunities to learn. And here, um, in, as a closing for today's short presentation, you see one little girl during her recess fascinated by the chickens and poking her fingers through touching them to learn more about chickens by, by feeling their feathers. And the chickens are obviously quite curious about her as well. We're really delighted that even in these um, interesting times that we're all facing, that the learning that we believe in so deeply at ISP continues. This is only one example. We'll share more examples uh, as we uh, meet with you each week. Um, this, this month in September, we're focusing on curio curiosity and how it drives what and how we learn. So look forward to more stories about curiosity and have a wonderful weekend. <laughs>